John likes tech and lives in Indiana, you know Kevin likes the Dodgers and talks on the radio John plays games on Xbox and on his Nintendo While Kevin runs around LA with his mustachio It's the Lack of Genius Podcast In your ear holes at last They don't know they're Mars from Venus That's why it's the Lack of Genius Podcast uh, Good evening I guess afternoon. it's evening here. It could, afternoon could be, there. I mean, it could it's be afternoon wherever everyone's listening. It could yeah, be morning. Yeah, I mean, it, it's still technically afternoon here as well. It's just it is afternoon. later than what people normally think of as afternoon. It's after noon o'clock. You know what, John? I am thankful for you, my friend. This is where you say I'm thankful for you too, Kevin. <laughs> just I, I, yeah, I am thankful for you as well, Kevin. It's allowed me to be able to actually do a podcast and have fun. I just had that conversation with my sister today. I was like... I would not be doing a podcast today if it weren't for John, and I'm really grateful for that. And I and and so I I, I did say I'm thankful for you, kind of as a joke to segue into that it's a Thanksgiving episode. But I truly am grateful for you. I'm I'm grateful for this podcast. I'm grateful for the people who listen to it and support it, and the fun that we're having. And it is the Thanksgiving episode, and that's why we're talking about things that we're thankful and grateful for. And and, and, I, and I should make sure that I say that I am also thankful for my wife for allowing me to be able to do this podcast with you. John, I'm thankful for your wife as well. Yeah, and I'm I'm not I'm not just stealing your thunder, but you've spoken about her very highly off the microphone before, and I know that you're very grateful for her for just being in your life. So mm-hmm. uh yeah, and, and that she allows allows you to have this time, take this time every week to record with us and have and have silly mic time with your friend Kevin on the <laughs> West Coast. Um yeah, so we're you know, we're recording this a couple of days mm-hmm. before Thanksgiving, but it will actually go live on Thanksgiving if anyone happens to be listening on the day of, or even the day before, because this does go live on Patreon the day before. Every Wednesday, we post this live for, for yep. our patrons. But yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Happy almost Thanksgiving. Hope mm-hmm. you're cooking is going well. Hope your eating is going well. And if it's if it's a week after Thanksgiving, that uh, leftover turkey in your fridge isn't going to last much longer. So you should probably eat it pretty soon. Yeah. And uh, and what what do we have? Uh, what do we have quiz wise today? Kind of the, what we've fallen into when it comes to holidays. I've got history stuff and you've got fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I felt kind of bad because I just put the quiz in and I labeled it Thanksgiving at first and it wouldn't let me because yours was already labeled Thanksgiving. And I thought maybe I'll label mine Thanksgiving generic, but I was like, that sounds boring. I was like, it's Thanksgiving fun. <laughs> That's what I'm labeling, it. <laughs> which by, by default makes yours the not fun one. Right. I don't like that. It's because yours is fun. Yours is, yours is informative and leads to a lot of fun conversation, but mm-hmm. just the way the cookie crumbles. It does. Or in this case, pies, maybe this is, this is the way that the pumpkin pie crumbles. Yeah. Well, we will, that's our episode for today. We're going to get into our tidy up section because that's yep. what we do every week. Tidy up before we go, go any further with the show, show. Tidy up before we go, go fix our mistakes tonight. I want to get it right. Yeah, so uh, tidy up. What, what do we do here every week, John? You know, fix our mistakes like the jingle says or shout out people. As far as I know, we don't have any mistakes from last week. We are flawless. Yeah, I mean, we had Barry on last week uh, with the joggling. I did make a really, really, uh, I misspoke. And when I was excited talking about me being a runner, I said, I ran in college. That's not true. I ran in high school. I didn't run in college. So there you go. There's one actual tidy up. Okay. We don't have any new patrons on Patreon. You can change that. Yes, you can by going to patreon.com slash lack of genius. And our patrons right now get they get the episode a day early. Mm-hmm. And John and I have not have not ironed any of this out yet. But uh, as a tease that could potentially affect our patrons, we are talking about merchandise because we yeah. have a new logo. We're not going to get into specifics because because quite frankly, we don't know yet. But yeah. um, that is on something it. on the horizon that uh, will potentially mm-hmm. be available for purchase, maybe available for patrons, but... Um, I mean, I, I I have gotten one response in that we should make a hoodie. Ooh, so. hoodie. Mm-hmm. Ooh, you know what we need to make now is juggling balls in honor of <laughs> Barry, Barry Goldmeyer, our MVP juggler, who I loved, by the way. I loved Barry. Oh, if yeah. you listened to last week's episode, you probably heard me say that several times. <laughs> he was... He was everything I I wanted in a guest and more, and we've we've caught, we went back and forth in email a little bit since then, and it's just I'm yeah. really happy to have this random connection with this 
what's the word I'm trying to say? A compliment. He's a, he's a weird dude. He's weird in the best way possible. He's a weird joggler dude, and that's why I love him. Mm-hmm. So, Barry, if you're listening, that that's a compliment. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you're following us on our socials because yeah. we do uh, we do post some things there. That that's one thing I wanted to mention is like we did a uh, poll about what I should juggle. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, if you were on our Instagram, you could have been one of the people who voted. Maybe you did vote. It was peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That video is uh, is on our Instagram and on our YouTube page. So yeah. we're we're across the platforms, and you can see what it looks like when I juggle three delicious peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Oh, yeah. and, and you actually, I mean, Emily and I watched that uh, yesterday after you uploaded it. Oh, you cool. did a fantastic job. With that. <laughs> Thank you. So. Um, all right. Well, uh, that's all we got to tidy up right now. We're going to, we're mm-hmm. going to quiz each other on Thanksgiving. Let's do it. It's time to take a quiz or two. Like a genius podcast doing this for you. You may fail, but it ain't no lie, baby. It's quiz. This quiz to be tough I just want to pass one Because I failed enough It might sound crazy But it ain't no lie Baby, it's quiz time Okay, Kevin, you ready for some uh, Thanksgiving questions? I'm ready to learn I was, especially because yours Is about Thanksgiving history Mm -hmm. And... You know what? I was really bad in history class, so there's a good chance I'm not going to know any of these. <laughs> well, and I actually learned some stuff today as well when I was researching for it and everything. So chances are there's going to be stuff that you don't realize is Thanksgiving. So even if I was paying attention in history right. class in high school, I probably would not have gotten right. these anyways. And we are tied 10 to 10 in our in our yep. grand total. So this is, a, this is a tiebreaker or we'll tie and it'll be our third tie ever. So we'll find out what happens. With thanks to... Uh, many questions from Barry. <laughs> yeah, all, all 74 of them. I, I was able to <laughs> out answer Kevin. Yeah, so. that was a marathon of questions, that's for sure. All right, so you're you're quizzing me on history. I'm, yep. I'm quizzing you on pop culture fun sort of silly stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, you're going to ask me first. So figured we kind of start at the beginning. Okay. Where do the roots of Thanksgiving come from? Wow. The Counter-Reformation, mm-hmm. the Council of Nicaea, Mm-hmm. the English Reformation or the Protestant Reformation. See, now I'd probably know at least one or two of these things if I paid attention in history class in high school. <laughs> no, I've, I've, I've heard of these things. I've heard of these and I couldn't even tell you. I, I have no clue what Council of Nicaea is. No clue. But I'm looking at, did I say that right? Nicaea? Mm-hmm. Count, yep. Counter-Reformation, Council of Nicaea, English Reformation or Protestant Reformation. There's three mm-hmm. Reformation choices, so I'm not. I'm gonna uh, Nicaea. If you're right, I'm so sorry, but I'm not gonna choose you. For some reason, Protestant Reformation is jumping off the page to me, and it may be because I drank a mango margarita before this. But <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna choose Protestant Reformation. Correct. All right. Thank you, mango margarita. Yeah. So you know we have one day that we call Thanksgiving. Yes. You know, back during the 1600s, there was the Protestant Reformation, which is basically part of the Catholic Church split off, wanted to be different, became the Protestant churches, you know. And with that, they kind of had these times of fasts and times of Thanksgiving. It's the name of the holiday. Exactly. There was one day of Thanksgiving that happened after the the English beat the Spanish Armada in 1588. And then there was... The one that ended up being an annual day of Thanksgiving that started in the early 1600s after the whole gunpowder plot happened, uh, which if you. Nope, I don't. <laughs> remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder treason and plot. You just got to put it in song form and then it makes right. sense to me. Well, everyone knows about that from uh, the V for Vendetta movie. Oh, which I haven't seen. I And I have ah. the mustache and people always right. say you're like the V for Vendetta guy. I'm like, yep, right. I haven't seen it. I mean, so. That was a plot to overthrow the, the British government. Didn't work. And so the, the Protestants had a an annual day of Thanksgiving because it was a, a Catholic guy that was trying to overthrow the Protestant government. Wow. So Thanksgiving wasn't necessarily a, a specific day. It was okay. a time of giving thanks for something that they felt God gave them. So it could happen throughout the year. Yeah, that's what I wondered. So it wasn't a specific time. It was just this no. is our time of Thanksgiving whenever it Right. So, and, it, and it was kind of the churches who decreed when that was. Nice. All right. So um, I got the first one right by some miracle. So that makes me one for one. We're going to ask the first one on Thanksgiving fun to John. 
according to Zipia.com, which I did not know existed until I looked this up, according to Zipia.com, what is America's most popular Thanksgiving side dish? So this doesn't include turkey. Mm -hmm. These are side dishes only. Is it macaroni and cheese, mashed potatoes, rolls, or stuffing? I'm going to have to go with either mashed potatoes or stuffing. Mm -hmm. Now, out of curiosity, is this combining stuffing and dressing? Because they are technically two different things. Well, yeah, it, it's interesting because much like the previous quiz about, well, on Halloween, there mm-hmm. is a state-by-state breakdown. And like in the South, in Louisiana, spoiler alert, their favorite is dressing. But what they did is they lumped dressing into stuffing because it's okay. the same. They, they considered it the same thing. So Even though one is cooked outside of the turkey and the other one is cooked inside the turkey. Is that right? Yeah, that, that's the difference between stuffing and dressing. Interesting. That That is a fun fact. Um, I'm going to go with mashed potatoes. Locking it in? Yep. Mashed potatoes is correct. Well done. Yeah, so um, the way they decided this is they looked at Google Trends and they looked Mm -hmm. at where there was like a disproportionate amount of searches for these items. They figured out that mashed potatoes are the number one most popular side dish. Rolls were actually second, which surprised me, but at the same time was kind of like, yeah, I mean, people like bread and it's very common. Um, Number three was was stuffing. And they did a state-by-state breakdown. Do you want to try to guess what what Indiana was? Um, Random dartboard? I'll tell you right now, it's not any of the three I just mentioned. Cranberry sauce. Ooh, good guess, but no. <laughs> it's According to this, it's, uh, it's green beans. Okay, I can see that. We do a green bean casserole in my family that I am all about. It's super good. I'm not a fan of those normally because they use cream of mushroom for the most part. And I it's, hate mushrooms. Oh, and you're not. A mu- I'm not a big mushroom guy either. I only really eat them if they're like a slight compliment. Like if they're on my pizza, I'm all about mushrooms because it just adds a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm with you. And then uh, California, we were we were mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes, and I'm I'm actually not a big mashed potato or gravy guy. And to be perfectly honest, I'm, I've never been crazy about Thanksgiving because I I'm not really into like traditional meals. I'd rather have right. like a taco or a burrito or pizza. <laughs> like I'm like, oh man, turkey and mashed potatoes. That sounds so boring. But that's just me. I don't know. But have you ever had a genuinely good smoked turkey leg? I no, I'm not 100. percent My brother has smoked several meats for us mm-hmm. in the past, and yeah, anything any smoked meat is is a game changer. So should try a turkey leg sometime. We did deep fry one one year, and I actually loved it. I was like, whoa, uh, can we do this every year? And we have, that was the only year we did it. Well, good job, John. We're both one for one. That's a good we start are. for us. Okay. So we've, kind of, we've talked about where the roots of it come from. Mm-hmm. But what year was the first well-recorded like, record Thanksgiving that was written down and stuff in the U.S.? Got it. 1584, 1619, 1650. Or 1719. Yeah, so, you know, what's going through my head right now is the way that we learn about Thanksgiving, which I know Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving itself has a certain controversy to it, especially with the, you know, Native American tie-in. And without getting too much into it, the idea that, oh, look, the pilgrims and the Native Americans got along really well when really there was, you know, white people coming over here was not good for Native Americans. That's an understatement. I don't mean any insensitivity by stating it that way. But I'm wondering if this first, like, well-documented, well-recorded Thanksgiving that you're referring to has to do with that idea and what we're kind of taught. And if it is, where does that lead me? These are There are a lot of questions here <laughs> that I don't really have the answer for. I will say that, it, I'll just read the choices again, 1584, 1619, 1650, 1719. Mm-hmm. I do think 1584 is too early. Um, and 1719, I think, Think sounds too late. I'm I'm gonna pick one of these 1600 ones, 1619 or 1650. I'm gonna say 1650. Incorrect. Dang. So it was 1619. Oh, um, so I was I was half. You were there. close. Yeah. And so there's kind of two that you know. There's one event in 1619 and another one in 1621. The one in 1621 was just kind of sparsely documented, but the one in 1619 was a celebration uh, in uh, Virginia in Charles City County. There was 38 English settlers that landed there, um, and as part of the charter that they had with uh, the London Company, they were required that the day of our ship's arrival at the place assigned 
in the land of Virginia shall be yearly and perpetually kept holy as a day of thanksgiving oh. to Almighty God. Hey. So it was a it was it goes back to that they're thankful that God allowed them to make it there. So we're just going to constantly, you know, yearly thank God for that. And then 1621 is what you think of as the, you know, it happened in Plymouth, Massachusetts. It was with the the Wampanoags. I may have mispronounced that, and I apologize. Uh-huh. Uh, which is a Native American tribe. Pr- the the Native Americans provided food and everything. You know, like we were always told during the winter. But that was because the Pilgrims they formed an alliance with the tribe, and they were protecting the tribe from the rival tribe. In exchange for like food, basically. Yeah. Wow. wow, So there there was a scarcity, yes, but it was also, you know, the pilgrims were helping the the Native Americans as well and fighting another tribe. This tribe wasn't exactly saying, please enjoy this this harvest that we found for you, that we created for you, which is, God, isn't isn't American history so, I don't even know how to finish that sentence, so. Whitewashed? Yes, whitewashed is a good way. I was just, ugh, just, just sketchy. It's just so sketchy. All right, man. So I missed that one. I'm one for two. You have a chance to take the lead here because you're one for one. And this is number two. Mm -hmm. Finish the line from Adam Sandler's Thanksgiving song. And we'll get more into this song. But the line is turkey for me, turkey for you. Let's eat turkey. And the blank is it either till it turns to poo in my big brown shoe while we play some clue till it makes us spew. It's in my big brown shoe. <laughs> so you're familiar with the song is what yes. you're saying. <laughs> and if memory serves, the next line is turkey lurky do, turkey lurky duck. <laughs> I, I don't even know if that is the next line, but I know that line is in the song. God, I had so much fun coming up with And I was like, man, I think a better line is till it turns to poo or till it makes us spew. But yeah, it is in my big brown shoe. You know, and I, I realize that we may have some odd, younger audience members who don't really know, but yeah, Adam Sandler performed this song on uh, on SNL, Saturday Night Live, back mm-hmm. in 1992. I forgot that, um, I know that Kevin Nealon was the Weekend Update anchor, but he mm-hmm. actually sang well, one of the verses and the choruses with him. So it's <laughs> it's like credited as Adam Sandler and Kevin Nealon. But Adam Sandler was, he was the main writer of the song, but he co-wrote it with an SNL writer and, um, and they performed it. And the goal was they were going to have a different cast member every year perform a Thanksgiving song. But that one became so popular that Adam Sandler came back and did like a second version of it the next year. And then it became like much like uh, the Hanukkah song Mm -hmm. uh, became like an actual hit, like radio stations started playing it. That happened with this song. And it it actually it like charted on the Hot 100. And and to this day, I mean, I'll tell you right now, my my station is going to play the turkey song on Thanksgiving. We play it every year leading up. And it's. You know, the interesting thought that I had about about this, and I realize I'm a big Adam Sandler song, so I promised Mm -hmm. a a fan I'm not going to bring Adam Sandler into every single episode, (laughs) but this one actually was was relevant. Mm -hmm. It sort of made me realize the same way that songs get popular today on TikTok, on social media, whatever it is. In 1992, TV was the only real big form of media that people could visually watch and see. And so this is very sort of similar to somebody coming up with some clever song on TikTok or Mm -hmm. some really catchy song and it charting on, you know, on the Hot 100. So Adam Sandler was, he was doing TikTok before anybody else, I guess is what I'm saying. (laughs) Good job, (laughs) I mean, And the the song that normally got played in our house was uh, Arlo Guthrie's Alice's Restaurant. Oh, I don't even know that. That's an actual Thanksgiving song? Yeah, it's like a 20 minute long song. (laughs) It's a fantastic song. That's cool. Arlo Guthrie's, what's it called again? Yeah, uh, Alice's Restaurant. I never Or Alice's knew. Restaurant Massacre. That's great. I'm going to listen to all 20 minutes of it. All right, good job. Well, yeah, you just you just went two for two, my friend. And I'm one for two, so let's see you if are. I can catch up with you. When was the first national Thanksgiving? So up until this point, Thanksgiving was kind of a uh, done by the church. You know, the church kind of decreed when there was a time of Thanksgiving. But so this was the U.S. government saying, hey, we're going to have a day of Thanksgiving. When was that? Wow. November 26th, 1789. October 10th, 1802. Hmm. November 21st, 1923. Or November 1st, 1776. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. So three of these dates are in November. 
which obviously we celebrate currently Thanksgiving, the last, the, whatever, the fourth Thursday of November, the last Thursday of November. There's one October date, October 10th, 1802. And interestingly, there's one 1900 date. So 1776 is the year that pops into my mind because that's when we declared our independence from whoever had dependence over us before that. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention in history class. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I'm joking. It was it was the Germans. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it was the English. It was the English, right? Just making sure yeah. we're on the same page. Yes. <laughs> so 1776. So that would, to me, that it would have to be Post July 4th, 1776, or actually, what did we learn the day it was actually signed was July like second, 7th, I believe. Second? Or yeah. Was, I don't I don't I don't remember at the moment. Isn't that funny? We learned that and you taught me that, and neither of us right? remember it. <laughs> um, anyways, um, I don't know if you putting November 1st, 1776 on there is because it's the correct answer, or to try to get me to think like, oh, maybe it was the day, you know, they <sighs> I don't know if they started declaring national holidays right right out the gate. So for that reason, I'm going to say it took them 86, 13 years. And on November 26, 1789, that's when they finally made Thanksgiving a national holiday. That's my choice. Correct. Yes. It was George Washington as president okay. uh, proclaimed that November 26, 1789 was going to be a national or think or nas nationwide uh, Thanksgiving um, quote saying as a day of public Thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts and the many and signal flavor favors of almighty God. Sort of the same decree mm -hmm. that was given a right. hundred years earlier or whatever that was, or I guess yeah. not a hundred. Yeah. Almost a hundred. Uh, very nice, John. Very nice. All right. Um, you ready for number three on the fun quiz? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Where you're two for two. How many turkeys are eaten each Thanksgiving in America specifically? 25 million, 31 million, 39 million, 46 million. Hmm. 25, 31, 39, 46 million. I'm just going to say 39 million. Punching in the 39? Yep. That's incorrect. Uh. It was the high one. It was 46 million. And to be honest, it's funny because like I have nothing to add to that. <laughs> I didn't really, I, that was a fact I just looked up and it was like, yeah, you know what? We eat a lot of turkeys on Thanksgiving and I know there's, we do. you know, there's a, there's a large vegan population and it's a pretty nasty holiday for, for mm -hmm. people who, who are strong Thanksgiving advocates. I see billboards every year in LA about like save a turkey this time of year. And I don't mean to I don't mean to discredit any of that, but it's also like this is it's such a huge machine. It's such a huge it holiday. It's such a tradition that I don't I'm not saying it I won't mean, ever change, but it's going to take having, a whole lot. We're having ham at my at my parents and then okay. we've got a turkey for her parents. So, yeah, we're doing both. But there you go. Forty six million turkeys a year for Thanksgiving. So you ready for another question? Yeah, man. So you're you're hot start three for three. I'm two for three. Going no, into I didn't. Four. I didn't get that last oh, one right. Duh. Oh my god, look at me trying to give you extra credit. Wow, we're tied. Is what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, we are. Good job on counting, John. And, and this is an international question. Hey, what month is Thanksgiving in Canada? September, October, November, or December? Wow. Now this is, I accidentally scrolled ahead and saw the word Canada. And so that's why when I read you the question, I said, this is in America. Cause I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't think I realized that Canada celebrates Thanksgiving. And, uh, I, and um, I always thought it was 100% American and I'm, I'm glad to be learning. So September, October, November, December, still in the same general fall time of year. It could be November. It could, it look, it could be that they celebrate the same day and that you, you are trying to throw me off. That, that, so I could choose November. Uh, I don't want to choose November, but because I already said the thought, I'm I'm going to choose November. And I, I don't know if it's the same day, but I'm going to say it happens in the same month that America celebrates. So I'm going to choose November. Incorrect. Dang it. It was originally being held in November. Uh-huh. But then when uh, the First World War ended, Armistice Day became a thing mm -hmm. on November 11th. And so Thanksgiving in Canada was somewhat of a military thing and okay. so they didn't want two things in the same week or within a couple weeks of each other oh yeah so they actually in 1957 canadian parliament proclaimed thanksgiving to be observed on the second monday of october 
Wow. Very good, John. All right. Well, that puts me at two for four. Mm -hmm. You're two for three. This is a close one, John. Stepping into number four. And here it is. Uh, Between the years 2017 and 2019, what was the average amount of residential fires reported on Thanksgiving Day? Is it 1,100, 1,800, 2,300, or 3,000? Um, Residential fires reported on the day of Thanksgiving between 2017 and 2019. What was the average? I'm going to go with 1,800. 1,800. John, 1,800 is incorrect. Ah. 2,300. It wasn't the it wasn't the highest one, but 2,300 residential fires. That. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, I certainly don't want to make light of, of fires. I, I almost hesitated putting this question in because fires are a very dangerous thing. And there yeah. are, I'm not going to get into the numbers, but there are deaths. There are injuries that are caused every Thanksgiving by fires. It's a real serious problem. And I think we've seen that everyone's seen the deep fryer videos mm-hmm. of like how quickly something could catch on fire. And I was, I was trying to find specific numbers about deep fryers, but um, right. I couldn't, I couldn't find anything too specific. And I also feel like the deep fryer thing was sort of a, sort of a fad for a few years, like a, like early 2010s. And I, I, I'm not saying people don't still do it, but I feel like it was a thing in like 2012, 13, 14, 15, somewhere in there. And right. you don't hear about it quite as much. But what I will say to, to make this a positive point is that for tips that the fire departments like to give is that you you plan ahead, making sure you know exactly what you want to do, that you have a, fr- a frozen or partially thawed turkey could explode or splatter launching oil on those near the deep fryer. So make sure your turkey is fully thawed before deep frying. So plan ahead. You want to isolate the fryer. You want to make sure it's not surrounded by guests, children, leaves, flammable items. You want to wear protective clothing. You can wear flame retardant clothing, gloves, and eye protection, and use proper equipment. So don't try to mm-hmm. like get your turkey out with like a, a broomstick or something. Like make sure you're doing it right because these fires do happen as i've said 2300 a year and we don't want you to be one of them so plan ahead and uh and be prepared and don't become a statistic here and whatever you do don't put water on a grease fire oh yes that spreads it it just spreads the grease in the water and yeah and and the other point i'll say is if you know a firefighter in your life uh pat them on the back give them a thank you tell them they're doing a great job because their thanksgivings are probably an extremely busy day and uh and they deserve our gratitude as well Mm-hmm. All right, John. Okay. So you, wow, we're both two for four going into the last question, right? Yep. Oh, that's what we call pressure. And it's a true false. Oh, yes. Yeah. See, mine isn't. I didn't even give you a true false. <laughs> <laughs> Ro- true or false? Ronald Reagan was the first president to pardon a turkey. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's now a tradition every year that the, that the president pardons a turkey, which is, uh, you know... I, again, I believe that's a tradition. I don't know for sure, but it's a nice thought. It's a nice thought. And and hopefully it does help raise awareness about like, oh, a lot of turkeys are, but it does seem kind of like a joke, right? It does kind of seem like, hey, look at it. We kill a lot of turkeys. So I'm going to pardon this one. It got lucky this year. Um, was Ronald Reagan the first to do it? He was president, I believe from, did he only do one term? 1885 to 1888 to 89. I know in 88, that's when Bush took over. 1885? Yeah, 18, back in the 1800s. <laughs> we, no, obviously that's wrong because turkeys weren't invented by then. I meant 1980. 1980. All I know is Ronald Reagan was the president when I was uh, when I was born, and I was born in 1885. So that's why I no, okay, 1985. Um, was Ronald Reagan the first? I'm gonna I'm gonna say true. I'm gonna say he was because it was either him or it was another president. I'm gonna say it was Ronald Reagan. True. Correct. Oh, yeah. He, he was the first one to officially pardon a turkey. Okay. Um, dating all the way back into the 1800s. Back when Ronald Reagan was president. Right. Exactly. <laughs> there was a turkey farmer that would present a turkey to the president each year up until his death in 1913, starting in around 1873. Wait, would present um, it? I mean, I'm sorry if you're going to finish this and I'm cutting you off, but as, like, as a gift, like eat this yes, for Thanksgiving? Yep. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh-huh. And then um, that eventually was taken over by the National Turkey Federation, I think is the okay. name of it. Good. Good for them. Um, the NTF. Yeah. They're the ones that provide the 
turkeys every year. And normally the, I guess the turkeys would be, would come from the state or even potentially the farm of the guy that's a, in charge of the NTF. Okay. Um, so it varies each year. I think I heard, uh, this year's came from Indiana. Um, oh, they ha- celebrity Turkey. Yeah. They have the names of peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> that's I think great. Is what I, saw. I love it. Um, but yeah, so, you know, the presidents were given turkeys then that's, you know, that still continues through today, but Reagan was the first one to officially pardon the Turkey. And it was kind of in response to the whole Iran Contra affair. You know, they were, they were asking Reagan if they would pardon Oliver North, but Reagan just decided to pardon the Turkey as a joke. Oh, uh, so to kind of deflect to, to, to deflect those questions about everything else. Wait, and I'm sorry, I should know who Oliver North is, but I don't. He had to do with the Iran Contra affair. Okay, got um, it. Which got I it. don't know. That's something I've never really dug into. But so a he whole lot. he pardoned this turkey to deflect from that. Right. <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but that's that's so us. That's so American politics, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Um, and, and so then it just kind of continued on, and, and so the, the the turkeys that get pardoned are not actually consumed. Some went to Disney. Uh, looks like last year's went to Iowa. Um, this year's are actually headed to Purdue. The, the, I mean, and you know what's so funny is they literally become celebrity turkeys. I mean, yeah, they can walk down the street and not be recognized, but you know, wherever that turkey ends up, let's say it's just on some really reputable yeah. farmer's farm. That farmer is going to tell everybody, hey, that their turkey got pardoned by Obama a few years ago. You know, like that. And I'd be like, let me take a picture with the turkey. Come on, bring the camera. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah. that's hilarious. So actually only one turkey got pardoned. It's only one turkey. Um, but evidently there's normally a selection between two. This year, peanut butter was chosen over jelly. Oh my gosh, poor jelly. <laughs> oh my Both God. were 40 pound turkeys oh or are 40 God. pound turkeys. Wow. Um, last year it was corn chosen over cob. That's great. The year before that was butter over bread. Cute. Peas over carrots drumstick over wishbone but now, okay but now the, here's the sad question that i don't want to ask is if peanut butter wins and jelly loses is, is jelly ending up on a thanksgiving dinner table then that i i don't know i hope they both get to go to the farm in iowa just like all our dogs do when they leave the house when they're old wow john uh, look i have a chance to to win this episode you do but you for those facts you just brought us you're the real winner here i don't care what <laughs> ends up happening with the results that was that was amazing um, well, let's see what happens because yeah, your, your total is now has, has final finalized at two for five. Mm-hmm. I'm two for four. So clearly I need to get this right to win. And if I get it wrong, we tie. It's the other way around. You have to answer it. Yes. <laughs> I swear this has nothing to do with the mango margarita. This is just, Are you my, sure? this is just my own loo- loo- loosey goosiness. Uh, all right, here we go. John, number five, you have to get this right to tie me. Wow. Yeah, I was totally wrong on my numbers and everything. Mm -hmm. According to Instacart, what is America's second favorite Thanksgiving pie? I'm assuming you can guess what the first favorite is. Pumpkin. Pumpkin is number one. So what is the second America's second favorite Thanksgiving pie according to Instacart? Is it apple pie, pecan pie, cream pie, or lemon meringue pie? I'm going to say no to cream pie, even though that's probably Indiana's second, because that's the, <laughs> that's the state pie. I don't, oh. I, I hate cream pies. Okay. I don't think they're tasty at all. Mm. They're just way too sweet. And yeah. I'm guessing between apple and pecan. Okay. Um, since Thanksgiving is primarily an American thing, I'm going to go with apple pie. As American as apple pie is what you're saying. Yep. All right, John, locked it in. That is... Correct. We got a tie, hey. John. I'll explain about the answer, but that's our first tie in like months, I think. Yeah. So uh, the, the the total stands at 10 wins each and three ties. And yeah, um, you're right. Apple pie is the second most popular, at least according to Instacart. This was based on, I believe, just purchases straight up. And there may, or actually, I, I think I took, let me see. Um, oh, this was actually based on a survey that Instacart did. Okay. So not even on purchases. It was just, what is your favorite? Um, and so uh, pumpkin pie was number one. Apple pie is number two. Pecan is three. Cream is four. And cherry, berry, and chocolate. Lemon meringue wasn't even on there. I just put it on there because I knew you like lemon stuff. I, I like lemon like lemon meringue pie as long as the meringue is actually whipped cream. 
I don't like meringue. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm um I do like lemon meringue pie. Here's what I'll say. I'm not a big pie guy in general, but I am obsessed with pumpkin pie because it's not very <laughs> pie like. I don't like the breadiness of pie, which I know is right. the appeal of to some people, but the bread the the like crust is to me, it's dry. It's not sweet. I'm like, where's the sugar on this? Why is it not cardboard. moist? Yeah, it's like cardboard. So like when I think about eating apple pie or or cherry pie or anything with a filling, I'm kind of like, eh, it's too dry. I don't want that. But pumpkin pie is creamy. I could eat that all day. Um, I do like pecan pie, I think, because the texture is a little different with the pecans in it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, pumpkin and apple are the one and two for for America's Thanksgivings. Good time. What, you, what, do you have a favorite kind of pie? I do like pecan pies. Mm -hmm. um, I do enjoy pumpkin with a lot of whipped cream like most people. Yes, same as um, But cherry is kind of at the top for me. Oh, okay. Like a really good tart cherry pie. That's yeah. very tasty. Okay. And and that that sort of makes sense with your with your like for mm -hmm. lemon. Um, only because I was gonna say I don't really I, I don't like tart things, and cherry is definitely right. not my favorite because it's kind of tart. And so yeah, that's uh uh, but it was number five, so you added to that to that tally just right now. <laughs> um, and I'll I'll do a quick shout out to my mom, who every year makes well, aside from pies, she makes this really. It's called a portofino salad. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's not a salad at all. It's like a it's Jello. It's literally cranberry Jello mixed with. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. It's raspberry Jello mixed with cranberry like. Um, Mm -hmm. like the mushed up stuff you mix mm -hmm. it all together you set it in the fridge so it hardens and you cover it with this uh cream cheese uh whipped cream combo okay and it's so good and i love it and i i noticed over the years at at our thanksgiving table that not a lot of people at our table love it so i end up getting like all of their <laughs> seconds my favorite thing to do is take leftover turkey leftover portofino salad and mix them together and it's so bomb and it's also one of the reasons i love it from a personal point is that it was something my grandma did every year. Right. And so my mom keeps that tradition alive for my grandma who passed several years ago. So yeah. just a quick shout out to my family. That's one of my favorite things yeah. about Thanksgiving. Yeah, I mean, and I, and I think part of the reason why I like cherry pies so much is um, like my dad's side of the family. We've, we've got the family farm. Uh -huh. My dad's uncle currently owns it and rents the fields out. But there used to be a, a couple cherry trees there. Oh, cool. Um, they have since died, uh -huh. but my grandma would get the take the cherries and then... Uh, either use some of them and then freeze the rest or and just you know would occasionally make cherry pies with those and they were you know that nice tart mm -hmm. really tasty cherries um but wow. i think for my birthday a couple of years ago my grandma used the last bag of frozen cherries from that tree wow so. see isn't it amazing how how nostalgia can affect your mm -hmm. taste a little bit too like i'm not oh, a big yeah. chocolate fan but my grandma made this german chocolate cake and it's like one of my favorite cakes to this day because my grandma made it it's just like it's right. your heart and your taste buds are connected i swear mm -hmm. um that's really cool john i love that well, a very happy Thanksgiving to you, John, and, and to, you as well. to everyone listening. Great job making the quiz. Great job taking the quiz. We ended up mm -hmm. tying three, three, three questions right each, yep. which I would say is passing. So yeah, um, sixty percent. You know, I just barely know my um, Thanksgiving history, and you just barely <laughs> know Thanksgiving fun facts. Yeah. Um, so uh, we we are going to be back next week. We're not we're not mm -hmm. uh, we're not slowing down. We have. We have a get. We have a, a guest planned, yep. and kind of like the other week, we there's a little bit of like logistical stuff that we're not 100 percent sure of. So we're not going to get into plugging official details, right. but it's something new that we're going to try, and we're really excited about it because every time we try something new, it's amazing, and we get written about in the New York Times yeah. about it, and it's just oh, always yeah. a win. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and there also maybe you know something new with how you guys can maybe see how the sausage is made. Oh, yes. And it's good sausage, too. It is. It is. <laughs> um, yep. Always open to your suggestions. You can find us on the socials. Lack of Genius podcast on the various socials. Mm -hmm. Real Again, I know we said it at the beginning of the episode, but I'm, I am super thankful for this podcast, for you, John, for the people who listen, because I get so much positivity, not just like recording this, but like throughout the week working on it. It doesn't feel like I'm doing work. It feels like I'm doing yeah. something fun and interactive. So, yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm very thankful for this year. Yeah, I mean, and if you just go to Google and type in lack of genius, yeah. we've actually, we're at the top of all the Google results Woo! now. So, yeah, so I'm also thankful for Google for helping them. Yeah, like our, our, our website, our Instagram, the link on Apple's podcast, Audible, Facebook. It's all there. So, yep. 
All right, John. Well, I hope you get a lot of uh, turkey and corn stuck in that beard on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> Enjoy your feast, man. Happy Thanksgiving. And, um, and yeah, we'll be here next week. It's the Lack of Genius Podcast. In your ear holes at last. They don't know they're Mars and Venus. That's why it's the Lack of Genius Podcast. Let me take a picture with the turkey. Come on, bring the camera.